This is BJ's on March 13th, 2020. President Donald Trump declared a national emergency. State governments classified this gargantuan box retailer as, quote, essential, and the line stretched to at least a quarter mile. We were giving all our money, in other words, transferring our wealth to big brand retailers like Target, Walmart, Home Depot, and Amazon for food, toilet paper. Ladies and gentlemen, I came and I conquered, got the toilet paper, dog. And I didn't have to come out here at six o'clock in the morning. And anything else they wanted to sell us at any price, while state governments forced millions of small businesses to shut down. Uh, a shelter in place begs a lot of questions. What is gonna happen with folks who have no money? How are they gonna get food? How are they gonna get medicines? Don't get it twisted. Don't let them rock your head to bed. The real great wealth transfer to which you need to be paying close attention is not that future Valhalla where successful and generous baby boomers pass down billions to trillions of dollars in real estate, stocks, trust funds, 1945 Pokemon card NFTs if they even exist. No questions asked to Generation X, Y, Z, the rest of the alphabet to count Sesame Street. In fact, my baby boomer pop told me that to claim my inheritance, I have to come out of my pockets and pay off a $25,000 debt on an apartment of which I take half. He, of course, takes ownership of the other half while I split the proceeds of my half with my brother and my half siblings. No silver spoon in my mouth, just a little mercury to fill in a cavity after I splurged at the bodega on too many Jolly Ranchers, Sour Powers, Quarter Waters, and Blow Pops. So I don't know what great wealth transfer you're talking about. You must be on a different rock or smoking it. I can feel it. The real great wealth transfer on which you need to be keeping both of your eyes, keep your ear to the grindstone, is going to come out of your pocket. The small business owner, the middle class, and the poverty stricken to big corporations. Elite socialism. An MIT working paper found that small businesses lost more than 40% of their revenue only two weeks after March 13th, 2020. Small organizations lost almost 50% of their income by the end of April 2020 and 12 weeks after the national emergency declaration. The report also suggests that although businesses suffered revenue losses, spending did not drop as much because of the stimulus business owners and individuals received. So we took our STEM checks, PPP, EIDL grants, and unemployment insurance to Amazon, Apple, Netflix, and big names because they were the only companies allowed to sell anything. So we get money so we can give them more money. The real great wealth transfer, elite socialism at its finest. Columbia University collaborated with Northwestern University and two other schools to release a paper finding that households spent more money upon receiving a stimulus check. Before receiving a stimulus check, households spent roughly $90 per day. After receiving a stimulus check, the average daily spending rose to around $250. Where was that money going? The Peter G. Peterson Foundation found that households mostly use their stimulus checks to buy, quote, essential products. I purchased all of my essentials at BJ's when I could find them. And BJ's reported an impressive year. Consumers also use stimulus checks to pay off debt, interest going to big banks, and credit lines they use to buy at BJ's. Others blew their checks on Walmart, Target, BJ's, Apple, and Best Buy. Foot Locker was enjoying increased online sales because people were spending their stim checks on sneakers. And of course, many people invested in the stock market, pumping more money into public companies. People earning between $35,000 and $75,000 annually increased stock trading by 90%, more than the prior week after receiving their stimulus check. Data show Americans earning $100,000 to $150,000 annually increased trading 82% and those earning more than $150,000 traded about 50% more often. In the meantime, small business owners became an endangered species. According to a paper published in the Journal of Economics and Management Strategy from February to April 2020, the United States wiped out 3.3 million business owners. The country had never encountered an entrepreneurial decimation of this magnitude in such a short time. From February to April 2020, the U.S. exterminated even a higher proportion of minority entrepreneurs. The number of African-American small business owners dropped from 1.079 million to 637,769, more than a 40% plunge. The number of Latinx small business owners dropped 
from 2.07 million to 1.4 million, a 32% mass elimination. The number of immigrant entrepreneurs fell by 36%, whereas the quantity of white small business owners dropped by 17%. On the publicly traded side of the business spectrum, the S&P 500 enjoyed an explosive gain of $2.9 trillion just in April 2020. Amazon alone jumped 27% during April and added $263 billion in market value during the month. Amazon's 2020 first quarter numbers speak for themselves. Operating cash flow increased 16%, the $39.7 billion for the trailing 12 months compared with $34.4 billion for the trailing 12 months ended March 13, 2019. Net sales increased 26% to $75.5 billion in the first quarter compared with $59.7 billion in the first quarter of 2019, excluding the $387 million unfavorable impact from year-over-year -year changes in foreign exchange rates throughout the quarter, net sales increased 27% compared with first quarter 2019. Amazon did better than in 2019, and the government was still helping them and other stock market juggernauts get bigger. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you elite socialism. In 2020, the Federal Reserve bought over $20 million in Amazon corporate bonds, which means the United States government loaned the e-commerce giant money they did not need at rock bottom interest rates. Corporate giants enjoy a countless array of significant benefits from the Federal Reserve corporate bond purchases. The organizations get millions to billions of dollars in capital to rebuild their balance sheets, which may help boost stock prices and appreciate their market caps. The companies can also buy back their stock, which may help boost stock prices and appreciate their market caps. When the Fed buys the bonds, the number of bonds in the market decreases and the value of the bond increases. Remember, when there is less of something, it costs more. The purchases help maintain the organization's investment grade credit ratings. Thus, the buys make investments in the bonds a safer bet, which increases the chance that investors will get paid back. The U.S. Federal Reserve, baby, cemented in immense power. The reason the rent's too damn high. Just a Federal Reserve announcement stating that the central bank will buy a company's bonds increases the value of the bond and lowers the yield that the company has to pay for the bond. As a result, a company like Amazon gets to pay below sea level interest rates. These guys get the bends when they cut the check. For instance, in June 2020, Amazon auctioned corporate bonds in the open market at 0.4% on a three-year bond. This rate equates to Amazon only having to pay $12,000 on a whopping $1 million loan. As far as I know, you'll never get that money from a merchant cash advance, let alone a mortgage. Mind you, this is a company that aside from being one of the most successful companies during the pandemic, the e-commerce giant has received $4.8 billion in government subsidies. The Federal Reserve pampered over 800 global enterprise organizations with the same white glove treatment. Adobe got a corporate bond loan of over $3 million. Apple got a corporate bond loan of $85.2 million. eBay got a corporate bond loan of $8.2 million. To top it off, Federal Reserve officials held the same type of bonds that the central bank acquired during the corporate, municipal, and mortgage-backed security shopping spree. Fed officials owned and traded the same type of securities or assets that the Federal Reserve was buying. Federal Reserve official financial disclosures reveal that Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell held $1.25 to $2.5 million in municipal bonds. These holdings represent a small portion of Chairman Powell's personal assets. While Chairman Powell acquired these bonds back in 2019, he held them while the Federal Reserve acquired five to six billion dollars in the same municipal securities, including a bond purchased from the state of Illinois by Chairman Powell's family trust back in 2016. Boston Federal Reserve President Eric Rosengren held $151,000 to $800,000 in real estate investment trusts that own mortgage-backed securities. Mr. Rosengren executed 37 separate trades on four REITs while the Federal Reserve acquired $700 billion in mortgage-backed securities. Richmond Federal Reserve President Thomas Barkin held $1.35 to $3 million in individual corporate bonds of Eli Lilly, Home Depot, Pepsi, just to name a few, while the Federal Reserve opened up a corporate bond buying facility to purchase $46.5 
billion dollars in the same corporate bonds and bonds of other publicly traded iconic companies. Moreover, Boston Federal Reserve President Eric Rosengren performed 50 trades between $1,000 to $50,000. President Rosengren traded Alibaba, AT&T, and Verizon to name a few. President Rosengren executed these transactions while the Fed loaned. $91.5 million to Verizon, according to the Secondary Market Corporate Credit Facility, and $97.6 million to AT&T in corporate bonds. You can't make this stuff up. Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan was also up to the same hoopity hoopity hoopla. A financial disclosure form from Dallas Fed President Kaplan raised eyebrows this week by revealing a number of million dollar trades in individual stocks last year, including Apple, Amazon, and Delta Airlines. Kaplan owned a total of 32 individual stock fund or alternative asset holdings with 27 of those valued at more than $1 million at the end of 2020, according to the disclosure. Martha Stewart went to jail for making only $230,000 for doing the same thing. These Federal Reserve officials among the most influential people on the planet were trading the stock market enlightened by a cigar smoking witch shaking a rattlesnake tail by her ear. Heckle, heckle, heckle. Forget Gordon Gecko. These dudes are the real life Biff from Back to the Future Part 2 getting rich because they got the 1955 to 2000 almanac reading all the sports winners on which to place bets. Furthermore, none of these holdings or transactions violated the Fed Code of Conduct when the central bank went on a buying spree to bail out Wall Street. Wall Street where the puts and calls leap, where the lords of finance buy and sell the money we think we all keep. That's where your money is going. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you elite socialism, the real great wealth transfer. The government talks about breaking up monopolies, homeboy, please. The United States is creating them. Saving big business while letting small businesses die eliminates Americans' options, freedom. What would you do without freedom? And choice. Without competition, big companies can charge us whatever they want, contributing to inflation. We've got the highest inflation numbers in 40 years. Why do these government officials give all this money to big name companies? Could it be that these companies are simply paying off politicians? In the 2019 to 2020 election cycle, the Amazon.com Political Action Committee paid out $1.3 million to federal candidates. Amazon contributed a whopping $659,000 to Democrats, $648,500 in contributions went towards Republican election campaigns. Practically a 50-50 split between the top dogs, while broke Republicans and Democrats kill themselves fighting about abortion and guns. The real political parties get an equal cut of the pie. We're fighting tooth and nail, knives and automatic weapons for ramen noodles on the streets while the GOP and Dems eat $1,000 tomahawk poppy steaks on our dime. Look at the people that got Amazon money. Karen Bass, Democrat from California, $10,000. Anthony Brown, Democrat from Maryland, $10,000. Vernon Buchanan, Republican from Florida, $10,000. Elijah E. Cummings, Democrat from Maryland, $10,000. Mario Diaz, Baylart, Republican from Florida, $10,000. Virginia Fox, Republican from North Carolina, $10,000. Furthermore, look at how much money politicians had invested in Amazon in 2018. Nancy Pelosi, Democrat, $500,000 to $1 million. Joe Kennedy III, Democrat, $300,000 to $700,000. John Hoven, Republican, $100,000 to $250,000. Justin Amash, Republican, $45,000 to $150,000. Thousand dollars. Why wouldn't they do everything they could to protect their personal investments? Now, I don't expect all of you to be at the level of investing thousands to millions of dollars into political campaigns to go public, to get the actual free money this country disperses, but ride with me. We're going to learn how to do that right here. Rod Squad, baby. I built my business. I'm a Jamaica Queens. What's up? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. yeah. By doing the same thing that big companies do by befriending my clients. I told my son this morning that I took a client out to a museum with my son. He ended up becoming a $20,000 client. I took a couple of executives to get drunk and eat some greasy ribs. 
$25,000 client. I am in the business of making friends. So you have to approach networking with the attitude of what can I do for you? After driving hundreds of thousands of unique visitors to Forbes.com without charging a dime, I met their executive editor and he got me a job writing for Forbes. I made like $2,000 off of the first article that I wrote in less than a week. Now I'm on YouTube where I've helped entrepreneurs secure millions of dollars in financing and grants through the federal government and private resources. I'm part of the machine. And now I've got the ultimate friend making platform and I welcome you to do the same thing. Find out how you could provide value and you will have every resource you require to be whatever you want. Then you may get to the next level where you could start paying off some politicians and going public. Watch the video you see on the screen right now so you can see resources that I share on this channel that will help you take your business to the next level through finance and efficient technical operation of your business.